What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to this channel, I am Gold Penny. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube, and today we're in the brand new 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500. And yes, we got the high country, so that's pretty stinking cool. Wanted to hop in this one because it literally just came out. Not only that, there has been a complete refresh for the 2024 model year. We got a bunch of new tech I'm looking at right now, including digital gauges, a massive infotainment center here. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. All right, and so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Silverado 2500. First one being the work truck starting at $51,595, custom for $53,295, LT starting at $55,895, LTZ starting at $63,095, and lastly being the high country, which is the one that I had on this particular drive starting at $72,895. And by the way, that was all pricing for the crew cab standard bed. Of course, there are other options, including a double cab and long bed available as well. But Powering the Beast, there is actually two different engine configurations. And so the first engine configuration is going to come standard on every single trim level. The other one is going to be optional. So the standard configuration being the one that we had in this drive was a 6.6 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 401 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 464 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through a four-wheel drive system, power being sent to the ground through an Allison 10-speed automatic. And so as far as MPGs go, it's estimated that this particular configuration is going to give you approximately 12 miles per gallon combined however in my short little test drive here and while leaving the thing running for an hour shooting the exterior and the interior that comes in at around 5.3 miles for my particular drive because of that so if you see that number on the gauges that's why it looks so bad because i was just leaving it running standing still basically but anyways like i said there is another engine option available that's going to be a 6.6 .6 liter duramax turbo diesel v8 by the way that's a nine thousand four hundred ninety dollar option there that one puts out 470 horsepower 2800 rpm 975 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm again sent to all four wheels through an allison 10 speed automatic zero to 60 time for that one should come in at approximately 7.7 .7 seconds with MPG numbers, what I found at least was a combined 15 miles per gallon. But so before we cut to the clip with the acceleration test I had here, which let me tell you was an absolute blast in the rain, did want to mention the drive modes. There's a little circular dial just by the driver's left knee that gives you normal and off-road driving modes. It's also where you can adjust uh, if you want to put it into uh, automatic four-wheel drive mode as well, where it automatically detects if four-wheel drive is needed. That's probably what I would leave it on, honestly, but that's where all the drive modes are going to be located. So I did want to mention that but now without further ado let's go ahead and test out the acceleration on this one all right you guys found our straightaway for the uh, acceleration test here so three two one we're spinning we're spinning ah, we're still spinning <laughs> all right it's fine it's fun spinning in the rain i gotta be honest but yeah it's raining out quite a bit it has been raining all morning the roads are super slick right now so I can't really test out the acceleration if I'm completely honest. Honestly, it should be fine. Like, there's a decent amount of power in this thing, but yeah, it's just raining out. So I'm sorry, guys. I can't give it the full acceleration test that I typically do. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So when it comes to the braking configuration on this truck, four-wheel disc brakes, of course, will come standard with Duralife brake rotors. As far as braking feel goes, it does feel like you're braking a rather large truck. I will say that it's not the very quickest from 60 to zero, I would imagine, but it feels fine. It's definitely something you would get used to, as I typically say with uh, larger SUVs that kind of feel the same way. It's something you get used to, but it doesn't feel like it comes to the quickest stop of the world. It's definitely a softer braking feel, but again, it's fine. You'll get used to it. But then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get short, long arms, independent front suspension with torsion bars. In the back, semi-elliptic two-stage with multi-lead springs. Did want to also mention though, there is a Z71 package. It goes for $325. That actually gives you an off-road suspension, along with that hill descent control and skid plates as well. As far as ride quality goes, it's honestly, it's been perfectly fine. I haven't had any complaints in terms of ride quality. Touching on steering feel, it's definitely on the looser side of things. There's no doubt about that. It's not a heavy steering feel whatsoever. Not that that's a problem, but it is a little bit on the uh, 
number side of steering. Uh, it's kind of as expected for a truck though, honestly. So having said that, wouldn't have minded if Chevy kind of made the steering feel a bit heavier in weight, I'm just saying. But then touching on cabinoids, that's actually been excellent. All I've really been getting is the, the pitter patter of the rain in my short little test drive here today. Other than that, road noise is at bay, wind noise is definitely at bay. So it kind of feels like a luxury vehicle on the inside when it comes to cabinoids. Again, minus the raindrops, I guess. But then touching on visibility, it looks like literally every single pickup truck you would imagine. You can see perfectly fine out of the rear view mirror there. So no issues there whatsoever. And so but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. You've got a new grill, new headlights, new front bumper, a lot of new for 2024. So also some new colors as well. And the High Country is actually now available with a midnight package if you wanted to go that route. But as always, let's go ahead and get started with where this one is built and assembled. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the new 2024 Silverado 2500 is built and assembled in the US. Gotta love it. So up front you will find halogen headlights coming standard for the work truck, custom and LT trims. LED animated headlights for the LTZ in high country. I'll get more into that in a second here. Do also get LED daytime running lights to go with that automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But back to that animated thing, I wanted to show this on camera. So what I mean by animated LED headlights is if you turn the turn signals on, it's gonna kind of look like it's sliding from the middle to the outside of the light. So. I love that. I think Audi maybe pioneered that way back in the day and uh, so many other vehicles are taking that now, which I think it's such a cool look like uh, the Mustang's LED sequential taillights, just as an example there. Another thing I really liked about the headlights though is there was a tiny little Chevy logo that lit up within the headlights. So it's all about the attention to detail. I was a big fan of that, but just below the headlights, LED fog lights do come standard for the LTZ and high country trim levels. You do get some black recovery hooks for all trim levels, but the high country because the high country is going to give you chrome recovery hooks in case you were curious there you do have a hood scoop up top there and there is that redesigned front grille like i said and we actually had an added option i wanted to mention here amber led roof marker lamps that's actually only a $55 option and i personally think it looks so stinking cool and it is worth it up top on the roof there so i'd recommend that but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now since we are around to the side of this one chrome belt line molding does come standard power adjustable side mirrors of course you will get black caps to those side mirrors for the work truck custom and lt trims but then chrome mirror caps for the ltz and high country trim levels with integrated turn signals of course high country badging can be found on that front fender if you go with the high country like we had here running boards also coming standard and i like the step on the back as well to get easy access to what's in the bed there so that was pretty cool Take a look at the wheel setup. They will differ depending upon the trim level that you go with, of course. 17 inch steel painted silver wheels for the work truck, 20 inch 10 spoke machined aluminum alloys for the custom, 17 inch machined aluminum alloys for the LT, 18 inch six spoke machined aluminum alloys for the LTZ, and 20 inch 12 spoke chrome alloys for the high country. So yes, every trim level gets a different wheel configuration. So anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's not go ahead and make our way to the back. And so we're now making our way to the back of the Silverado here. Halogen bulb taillights coming with the work truck custom and LT, but you will get LED taillights, a little added illumination there for the LTZ and high country trims. There of course are some assist steps back there as well, just like on the side. There's the tow hitch of course, and so since I mentioned it, when it comes to max towing capacity, 16,000 pounds for the gasoline powered configuration, but then 20,000 pounds for the diesel. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out what you actually need on this one. And of course there is a single exhaust outlet kind of tucked away on the passenger side underneath there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> And so now making our way to the back of the Silverado here. When it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a button on the key fob. That is probably the easiest way. There is also a button on the tailgate itself, of course, as well. So 
Once opened up there, there are standard and long bed configurations available. Payload capacity, once opened up, comes in at 3,565 pounds for the gasoline powered engine, and then 3,576 pounds, slightly, just slightly more, for the diesel powered engine. So that's where that's at. LED cargo bed lighting for the high country, it's gonna be optional on the other trim levels. Of course, you have your cargo tie downs as expected back there. Chevy Tech spray on bed liner is gonna come standard on the high country, but it's gonna be optional on all of the other trim levels there. And then there is a 120 volt power outlet back there for the LTZ and high country trims. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 35.2 inches for the double cab, but then 43.4 inches for the crew cab. That of course is what you guys are looking at right here. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard rear ventilation as well. 120 volt power outlet coming with the LTZ high country and available on the other trim levels. And then if you wanted heated rear seats to spoil the rear passengers, simply go with the high country that we have with us here today. But so then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable seating does come with the work truck custom and LT. 10 way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar for the LTZ and high country cloth seating is going to come with those first three again the work truck custom and lt perforated leather though coming with the ltz and high country heated front seats again those two trim levels as well as far as quality goes in my short test drive that i had in this one it was absolutely no issues whatsoever seats were perfectly comfortable i definitely could see myself going on a long road trip in this thing but then take a look at the steering wheels tilt and telescoping of course leather wrapped for the lt ltz and high country and then heated for the ltz and high country trim levels as well then take a look at the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your chevy bow tie logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the tailgate button and we actually have a remote start which comes standard on the ltz and high country trims but it is a keyless entry with the push button start for the lt trim level it up so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that indented engine start button so once started up, this is one of my favorite parts personally, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster for the LT, LTZ, and high country. Other trims are gonna give you your traditional analog gauges, but I do love the digital gauges that we had on this one here today. You can check out your off-road mode if you wanna put it on that up there. There's uh, outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Basically everything you could possibly want on a uh, digital gauge cluster. They're so customizable. You can really make it look like whatever you wanna make it look like, but then make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof goes for $995. We have that option in this test drive. I loved that. Universal home remote meaning the garage door openers for the high country. It's gonna be optional for the LT and LTZ. Wireless phone charger for the high country as well. And you got tons of storage within the center armrest. I will say that I wanna mention that now because it's right next to the phone charger here. Tons of hidden storage scattered throughout the truck as well. So like just behind the infotainment screen, you got a little bit of rubberized storage there and kind of just by the driver's right knee, you got a little bit of hidden storage there as well. Lots of storage within this thing. So I was a big fan of that. But anyways, dual zone climate control for the LTZ and high country. Otherwise you get single zone climate control, of course. High country badging on the center armrest. I thought that was a nice added touch as well. We got the authentic wood trim in this one too. So dual cup holders, of course, and a little bit of rubberized storage just in front of that. But honestly, for a truck, this was plenty fine. So certainly not gonna have any issues with interior quality in this thing. But then taking a look at the infotainment screen. I was a big fan of this one as well because you actually get a 13.4 inch color touchscreen display. You get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system is going to be available radio information you can adjust up there as well of course so when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them you get six speakers if you go with the work truck custom lt or ltz and then a seven speaker bow sound system with the high country so having said that this one was fun i'm gonna go ahead and turn on the radio here and let's test out the clarity of our bow sound system that we have with us here today that's a really good sound system for the Silverado 2500, without a doubt. Plenty of bass. That bass is really, really good. Clarity is on point as well, actually. So, honestly, I expected nothing less from a Bose sound system. They've been around for freaking forever. But that was an amazing sound system for the Silverado here. But anyways. But so, but the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Silverado in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but got plenty of angles on this thing too, including a bed view camera, which I thought was stinking cool. But anyways, it's always that. 
it's going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to headless for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard following distance indicator, forward collision alert, lane departure warning, teen driver mode, which prevents your teen driver from turning off any of the safety features. And then it logs it in the system. They actually do, which is kind of funny. Front pedestrian braking as well. And then the high country is gonna to add to that a side blind zone alert with rear cross traffic alert then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of this thing, towing numbers are definitely quite impressive. I was a big fan of that. If you're towing a boat or something, like this should definitely get the job done. Very smooth shifting as well. The Allison 10 speed automatic, it was not jerky whatsoever. I really was a fan of the transmission and uh, kind of refreshing not to drive a CVT, which I feel like everyone is going towards these days. Also some very nice tech when you add together the digital gauges and also that 13.4 inch infotainment screen. I was a big fan of both of those. As far as room for improvement goes, definitely a loose steering feel. Wouldn't have minded if they gave it a little heavier of a weight to it. That's just my personal preference, but I think I think most truck drivers would prefer that as well, quite honestly. And the braking feel wasn't the best. It felt like it took forever to bring the Silverado to a stop. So wanted to mention that as well. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun driving this thing, but let me know what you guys think of the Silverado 2500 in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay go.